Right, so we're gonna we're gonna talk about auctioneering. My goodness, action auctioneering, I suppose. Joffen Yerden with from Rienen with me. He's the lead auctioneer. So he says. We'll find out why at High Street Auctions, and he's the man in the spotlight. Are you always in the spotlight? In fact, you are in the spotlight because every single day when you're work, you're you've got all these people with lots of money to spend. And sort of snobbishly, snobbishly stick up their noses or whatever. And what do you do? You just you're right in the middle of all the valuable items. Well, we like to alleviate what rich, privilege, rich people yeah. of their money, and some we give to the poor, and some we keep for ourselves. Do you really keep it for yourself? How no. much? Ten percent. Ten percent. Ten percent. We keep for ourselves. The rest we give back to the uh, to the sellers very quickly. It's a it's a it's a quick fast process. Let me ask you a ridiculous question. What in fact is the role of an auctioneer? What does the person do? I think I know what you do. We, I can see visually what you do, but I have a sense that you do more than that. The role of an auctioneer. Mm. We um, oh, yeah. the official role is we facilitate the meeting of the buyer and the seller mm. somewhere in the middle. The unofficial role. Um, you know, somebody came and asked me the other day. You know, what do you do? And and little guy from school. And I said, well. Um, I bend numbers for a living. He said, well, how do you do that? And so <laughs> I, I had a little auction and gave him a chart and off we went. <laughs> you bend numbers. How, how do you bend numbers? Well, it's all in the chart. You know, having your fillers, having your chart, bending numbers. There's, you know, so many ways you can say the letter five or the word five. But that's, uh, that's what we do. We facilitate transactions between anything. So, so I would say ordinarily, if you're... Facilitate transactions. You could well be called a salesperson. You could be called a broker for all I know, right? You could be called a connector. But specifically auctioneering, there's a certain philosophy around it. And I'm observing from a distance, I'm going to pick your brain about it. That tells me that it's, it's less about, you know, I like the denim jeans, I want it and I'll buy it. It's less about that, but l more about, about making a statement. It's, it's emotional. Yeah, you know, sellers are emotional. Buyers are buyers are even more emotional. You know, how do you how do you know if there's a buyer at your auction? Go up and shake his hand, and he'll have a sweaty hand. They're nervous. It's it's a it's a it's an exciting, fast process that that people get get whipped up in emotions. You know, you could be selling jeans, you could be selling high end commercial real estate like we do. It's a it's it's a lot of fun. Was it always a lot of fun for you? Always, for the last cheapest. Uh, 20 years, I think, since I was 21. Uh, my theory is, if it's not fun, don't do it. So if you're the Springbok uh, captain, Jean de Villiers may be, and uh, the box lose to the All Blacks, <laughs> then he can say we've had a bad day. Or if the, if the cricket team loses to Australia, whatever, they can say we've had a bad day. What's a bad day for you? Bad day for me. Mm. Not reaching reserves, uh, mumbling my words on the block in the middle of my chant, uh, not selling enough, you know, un unless, unless I hit 100%, I'm never happy. Unless I have smiling, you know, smiling buyers and sellers, I'm never happy. Um, it could be anything, you know, it could be a charity auction, which we do as well. You know, mm -hmm. if I didn't raise a million and I thought I could have done more for the charity, I'm also not happy. So uh, I'm a bit of a perfectionist when it comes to being on the block. But, um, it's, you know, I, I have a passion for it. Uh, and, and in terms of performance, are you there for like a league champion mid table or relegation <laughs> material? Actually, you can't be relegation material because I probably have to show you the you door. Ne you, you know, it's I suppose <laughs> the same as being presenter, the same as being an auctioneer. You you never know enough. You're always learning. I'm I have an insatiable appetite for for surfing auction websites all over the world. Uh, I'm lucky enough to be to be sent to the uh, World Auction Conference once a year in in the United States, and you know I I can never get enough of auctions, be it cattle auctions, be it buffalo auctions for forty million, be it charity auctions, uh, anything. If it has the word auction attached to it, I'm there. So I'm looking at myself, and just by the way, to listeners, Geoff Van Rienen is my guest. He's the lead auctioneer at uh, High Street Auctions. So we're talking about him. We're putting him in the spotlight, and he's sort of. Why? What are you doing that? For? This is this is the gavel, the tool of the trade. So it's spelled what? G G A V E L. Okay. Uh, same as a judge, mm. but this is obviously a little larger and more expensive. So you can knock the table, not too hard. I don't not want too you to hard. break. Yeah. This is what we do. <laughs> and that's not order. That's done. <laughs> no. Sales done. <laughs> Gone. Finished. Over. <laughs> okay. Got that. Well, I tell you what. You know the people ask me like, what, what's the big fix? in terms of presenting and I think it's the privilege of being able to ask just about anybody a question mm. as simple as that 
So what, what's the big thing for you? It's a big thing for me. Mm. <sighs> Good question. Uh, being on that block, um, uh, you know, bending those numbers, pulling money out of fresh air, making buyers and sellers smile and happy when they leave the room, raising money for charity on auctions. Uh, you can do anything on an auction. They've been around for thousands of years. I think it started when uh, the Romans started auctioning off brides, uh, women, uh, mm -hmm. uh, on auction. Pretty ones would go first and the ugly ones would be sold last on auction with a couple of cows to add on. Um, it's, it's, it, it's a huge satisfaction for me to, to climb off that podium knowing that there's a charity richer, uh, there's a seller who's made a profit and there's a buyer who's over the moon happy that he has a new property. All right, 891 that's the call-in number. If you want to chat to Jeff from Rian, I'm, I'm hoping that you can like, know him, that you've, you've bought something from, from one of his fancy auctions. I don't know, but if you've heard about him or if you've just heard about auctioneering as a career and you uh, want some advice, I would strongly suggest you call in, ask that one question that's the most important. You have the option to SMS 34701. You can tweet as well at Ashraf Garda. Also tweet to at uh, SAFM Radio. So... What's been your career high? I mean, you may say there's many, but like, really, there's got to be two or three that absolutely stands out. Career high. Uh, on the professional side, uh, it was probably in the last 12 months, we, um, the company I'm lucky enough to be part of, we auctioned off a shopping centre, a mall up north. Uh, in, in South Africa, in South Africa, mm -hmm. um, for seventy-three million, that was a, a personal record for me uh, and a record for for the seller. Uh, he wanted about five million less, so I performed well, managed to so five, five above his hit the gavel on the block. That was that was that was a lot of fun, uh, nerve-wracking. Uh, you know, you can't you can't make any mistakes at at that level. Um, personally, uh, I I really enjoy my charity auctions. I enjoy giving back. My theory is you must give to get. Uh, you know, probably the smallest little auctions, and I've done some amazingly weird charity auctions, but, you know, the small ones, uh, late on a Friday night in the middle of Benoni for a little girl with, with leukemia, raising money for her, and, um, you know, selling, selling a, a second-hand TV stand for 25,000 Rand and the guy knowing he was going to get nothing for it and he just, you know, wanted to give money and I just alleviated him rather quickly with it. Okay, alleviating is a, is a word you use very <laughs> often indeed, yeah. What, you know, what, what's your preparation like? You know, preparation for day before what? Uh, what, what do you do? Besides the facts and figures, obviously. You number, drills, yeah. number drills, number uh, drills. As an auctioneer or as an auction company? As an auctioneer. Well, let's talk both. Okay, auctioneer. Yeah. As an auctioneer, uh, number drills. So I auction in the car. What, what's a, so number drills means what? I mean, well, give, drills. give me a drill now. Uh, number drills, uh, you, 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 can, you can double up, you can count from one to ten and backwards in one breath. Then you, instead of counting <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, you go one, one, two, two, three, three, four, four, up to ten, back down again. Then if you can do that in one breath, then you hit 20, then 30, then 40, then 50. Number drills, um, you know, hydration. I have uh, green tea with honey before every auction to line the line the voice box. You don't, you're a broadcaster. There's a, there's a <laughs> you are. What's the they difference? They say I have the face for broadcasting. <laughs> I'm not sure. But essentially, you, you're broadcasting. That's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's what I do. Um, <laughs> you know, making sure I, I don't fall off fall off the podium, which I've done before. In many years ago, it's um, that that's that's my preparation. Mm -hmm. Good night's sleep. Put the voice box in. Get it done with uh, some honey. Do your number drills. Make sure you're ready and run like mad. And the mental preparation. Mental preparation. Mm -hmm. um, I <laughs> I listen to music. <clears throat> I listen to music in the car on the way to the auction. Um, we do our, um, our but I, I have a sense it's it's mild music. It's more like classical music, not quite classical. opposite. Not uh, not not Eminem no. or whatever who's no, it's, been it's performing in South Africa right this moment. No, no it's ACDC or or it's, oh, really? or it's, some, it's okay. something loud classic uh, that I can blast the car out with that gets me excited, gets the adrenaline flowing, and and when I get out the car, I jump and scream and shout, and we're ready. Okay, we are the champions. Something along the line. Let's get let's get to some of the calls. You need to put your headphone on. Um, 
Yeah, having having great fun learning about uh, auctioneering. And as I said, the privilege for me, asking questions I never had to ask before, right? Uh, Gerard on the line from uh, Louis Trichat. Hi. Yes, hi. How are you? Yeah, good Good talking to you. Go ahead. Good. Um, well, I just wanted to know, a uh, while ago I went for, for the whole course and I completed it uh, to become an a auctioneer. Mm-hmm. But um, I'm having trouble starting off. Is there maybe a company where you can go as a, say, intern or something? You know, just, just to get into the flow of things, get to meet the right people, you know, and then start your own thing. Okay. I'm not the expert. My, my guess already, it has to be charity functions at school. That's what I would think. But where am I to answer? You go ahead. Well, Gerard, it, it really depends what you want to auction. Um, I, I gather you did the course with Hedley Harris? Uh, no, it was in, in, in Cape Town. Oh, in Cape Town. Well, yeah. what do you want to auction? Do you want to auction real estate? Do you want to auction cattle? Do you want to auction well, antiques? Well, ev- eventually I want to do real estate, but yeah, I would like to start with cars and just uh, the normal uh, loose, loose stuff. I would, I would take Ashraf's advice. Uh, you need to start somewhere. Start with charity auctions. Start with auctions for schools. Start with auctions for churches. That's a good start. It's, it's taken me years and years and years. I was lucky enough to, to study auctions overseas in America. And, you know, mm-hmm. I had, I had been auctioning for 10 years even before I did those, those studies. And that took another three years. Start, yeah. start auctioning. Start auctioning for yourself. Start auctioning in your car. Start auctioning when you walk around. Auction in the shower. Auction anywhere. If you want to get professional, depending if you want to work for one of the big companies or whether, whether really you want to work for yourself. Yeah, obviously at the end of the day, I would like to work for myself to do my own thing. Then listen, if you, if you have fun doing it and there is a specific, uh, a specific niche that you enjoy, that you like, just go for it. Open up a little auction house. Uh, you know, all you need is a, is a garage, uh, literally a garage and a, and a soapbox to stand on. Uh, get your mm-hmm. license if it's real estate. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. If it's cattle, get your real estate and stand on that box and make a noise. Trust me, people will stop and listen. I've got some old furniture I want to get rid of today. You may just be in business if you if you <laughs> really drop me an email right now. Ashraf at sfm.co. Thanks for that uh, call. Yeah, But I mean, it's, it's an interesting one because the, the other part of it is, and, and maybe it'll come up from some other callers, but I asked you about preparation. Preparation then as a company, what's the difference? Preparation as a company is, is, is vastly different. Uh, it takes it takes us about a month. We uh, we have two companies. That one, the High Street Auction Company, focuses on on retail, commercial, industrial, and high end residential. Then Main Street Auctions, which is a a standalone entity which does properties on site, and we have a team that just runs around from house to house, day to day, week to week. From the commercial auction side of things, buildings, malls, hotels, blocks, business blocks. It, it's it's a month of preparations. It's it's the property profiling is very important. The property processing is 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 our big success. Uh, we have auction briefings uh, probably two days before the auction actually starts and kicks off, and I probably sit down from anything between five and eight hours pre-auction, going through every single property, who's called, why they've called, when they've called, what for, what did they ask, how much. We then go through each of the properties. It's a it's a it's turned into a science uh, you have to prepare properly otherwise you know mm-hmm. leave, leave the gavel at home because because i say we, we obviously see we see the outward expression which is which is the work you do but but the key really is to get the business and and get uh, let's say the shopping center or the coin or diamond that needs to be sold to be sold through you and not not a rival company and the reason they would use you is obviously track record, client base, client list that you actually have. I mean, that, that's the key, isn't it? Well, I mean, they always say you're only good as your last auction. Mm. And mm. you can you can lie to your to your sellers for so long. But come the auction day, the truth's going to come out. Sooner or later, someone's going to look like a fool. Uh, it's a it's a big, big team effort. You know, there's, there's 60 people back at our office and every single one of them is geared up for that auction on that day. It is a, it is a big team effort, you know, from from front to back end to processing to the to the auction marketing systems we have to the management systems the profiling and uh, processing as i said it's it's a it's a big train and if you know one wheel isn't working uh, the train doesn't go it's it's a, it is a big team effort why don't clothes get auctioned i hardly ever see that clothes yeah just think about it is, is, is that like because don't be ridiculous. There's no I've market auctioned off. I've auctioned off a few lingerie pieces, but that was for charity auctions. It's a very good question. Why are clothes never auctioned? Uh, probably, 
Probably because we go through them so often. No, there you are, <laughs> undercover. Uh, I'll get to another caller. What about auctioneers having planted? This is the, the most important question of the lot. Mm. What about auctioneers having planted people secretly bidding in kickbacks for repositions mm. and lots of ambiguous practices like auction alliance scandal joe okay hold that forward i want to get to the call first uh oh eight nine one one oh four two seven crazy let's get your opinion hi good afternoon nice afternoon. Great show, great show, as usual um just a quick question for your guest i've i've heard stories tales about people who've accumulated great impressive property portfolio uh, via auctions i would l- i would love to be one of those people obviously not today not tomorrow but in few years time i just want to find out what is the trick what must i do what where must i go to lend the inventory out in, in order to be able to say in five or ten years time to be able to say what i'm able to to, to get great deals in, in the, from the floor basically what can i lend what where can i go and that kind of a thing i okay got that let's listen on the radio right thanks for that call yeah go ahead i would suggest start buying the newspaper friday is a big day uh, citizen star built uh business day those are the main uh, august if you're in cape town i would august cape town uh, mm-hmm. in cape town the weekend august as well saturday is a big day for auctions in cape town start buying the newspapers start watching and following the auction adverts go to as many auctions as you can depending on what city you're in. Friday uh, is a big paper in Durban, as is Johannesburg, a set, uh, Saturday and Friday in Cape Town. Start following the auction sections. Uh, start looking at the classifieds. Go to the local sheriff auctions uh, for the selling execution sales. Uh, I think it's sasheriff.org. Uh, log on and be a, be a registered user of as many auction sites as you can. Become a user, put your email address in, they will send you daily, weekly updates as to what's happening. Just you know, start getting out there, start going to auction so you can get as much experience as you can. And you buy lots of properties, let's hope you do that. Mm. Now, now, what, what about that question we had earlier on? It is a problem. Collusion and, and a whole lot of different things, yeah. It's, it's a problem. Uh, it, was a, it was a bigger problem in the past. Uh, a lot has happened in the last two years. Consumer Protection Act is here now. Uh, that, that strengthens everything, both the auctioneer the auctioneer's power as well as the uh, the consumer's power it is a problem i would suggest uh, using a strong reputable auction company and if at any time you think that something is amiss or something is happening that shouldn't be happening stand up stop the auction and ask a question if you're not sure uh, where the bid is or who is bidding stand up and ask um, as a consumer, you're entitled to do that. So who, who's done that before? But I mean, how do you stand up when you have a judge in front of you saying order and finished? How do you do that? You're just going to ignore that person. I mean, seriously. No, not at all. Uh, I had a person in November stopped and stood up in the middle of the auction. Mr. Auctioneer, you're going a little bit too fast. Uh, who's bidding? I pointed out the man who was bidding. He acknowledged it and we carried on and he ended up buying the property. He was, he was happy. Okay. Interesting. If you're not, and, if you're not honest, you're going to get caught out. And the kickbacks? The kickbacks, I think, are the thing of the past. Um, you know, the whole the whole scandal that broke a year ago, two years ago. The banks have cleaned up, the liquidators have cleaned up, the attorneys have cleaned up, the auctioneers have cleaned up. It was a bit of an old school regime uh, that was running around doing their thing that they shouldn't have been doing. And, you know, a couple of heads fell, a couple of people were moved sideways, a couple of people went on early retirement. Um, you know, a couple of people are still there. It's... It's, it's an unfortunate thing that happened, and it should never have happened. But, you know, I think in any industry, you're going to get a few black sheep. Um, it's just how we can weed them out as, as quickly as possible and make sure that the industry, in any industry, is kept as ethical and as trustworthy as possible. So, so for the record, how many guys have you planted in the audience? <laughs> I dare you to come to an auction of mine and ask that same question. <laughs> you probably end up buying a lot of stock on my you auction. Think so. No, look, you, you're only as good as your last auction. If you do that once, uh, it's over. You, you have one name and, you know, the, we have a big company, lots of people. Uh, one would put everybody at risk doing that sort of thing. So uh, it's a flat no, never. Okay. I'm going to find out one of the, the factors of sort of uh, being the auctioneer is the type of people you mingle with. We'll get to that in a second. One these are saying, so how are auctioneers paid? Do they get a percentage of the items they sell and why do they speak? Why do they speak the way they do? Okay, I think I know why you tell us why. Why do we speak the way they do? Well, it's, 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 it's to, to, you know, to create the charge in the room, to, to create that excitement. If, um, if it could be, you know, 10 rand, 
20 rand, mm. 30 rand. No one's going to bid. It's boring. But if it's, you know, 10, 15, 25, 30, 35, 40, 40 45, 50, um, you know, it, it's it's a lot more exciting. Can, can we go sort of higher up? Because I, I want to hear this, you know, from like... Well, we're going to have to auction something off if you want to. What do you want to auction? Let's, um, let's auction you off. How many oh times have you been auctioned off before? Never before. <laughs> Never. <laughs> well, I tell you what, we've got your producer. Do we, we have a reserve price? We have Buffy in the corner. No, a reserve price. No, no, absolutely not. We'll have a no reserve auction for Ashraf. I'm happy to say that the simple way is, is for people, whoever wants to actually come and sit and watch what we do in studio. That's the deal. I hope no one's watching. <laughs> right, where should we start the bidding? I think I'll just ask the producer where we can start the bidding. They'll probably say a thousand rands. I think they'll be. Let's go, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, one, have it a bit, have it a one, 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 give it away, have it a thousand, have it a thousand now. Have it a twelve fifty, have it a fifteen, have it a two, 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 have it a two and a half, have it a two, have it a five, five, five. Five thousand rand to the little lady in the back, have it a five, have it a seven and a half, have it a seven, have it a ten, ten, ten now. At ten, have it eleven, ten and a half, have it a bit, have it a twelve, twelve, have it a thirteen, have it a fourteen now. At twenty thousand rand for the first call, ladies and gentlemen, at twenty thousand once, for twenty thousand twice. Third and final call, all done at twenty thousand. So, oh, and, and excuse me, there's a gentleman late. at the back. Wait, there's a gentleman at the back there, and he says, <laughs> I think you're speaking a bit too fast. I can't hear you. There's can a you, little lady. A at, slower. There's a little lady at the back with a white stick that just bought you as well, so we, it is a bit <laughs> concerning. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get uh, Faisal on the line from Durban. Hi, Faisal. Hi, how are you? Yeah, good to hear from you. Go ahead. Fine, fine. I'm just talking about the collusion you get in the sheriff's auction. You know, I'm not sure whether you guys aware of that. What happens? You know, you're finding a ring. You know, there's a ring that takes place. Normally, people that goes to the sheriff's auction and buy. In fact, a lot of the auctions we notice in Durban. You know, people. You know, they sit in the ring and they get about two, three people get together, and they sort of dip prices down, and then you know that's it. And uh, you know, uh, sometimes they push prices up. Uh, because you have about 10, 15 people in the, you know, in the ring and, you know, they manage to buy the items and then you're sitting, if you want to make a, in a bit, you don't get a bit. I'm not sure if you guys are aware of that. Okay, well, you just told us. Th thanks for that. Thanks for that, Faisal. Yeah, go ahead. Well, you know, I'm not a sheriff, but I do attend a lot of sheriff's auctions. Uh, what I, uh, not sure what the question was, more like a statement, but what mm -hmm. I can, what I can say is that, you know, if, if he's concerned there's a ring being formed and there's a ring in the auction, um, break the ring. Uh, stand up, uh, ask the sheriff who's bidding, he's completely entitled to if he thinks he's bidding against uh, a ring or somebody that's not there or a ghost, whatever the case is he, as a consumer, uh, according to the new act, he's quite entitled to withdraw his bid at any time before the hammer falls so if he's concerned about that happening stop, withdraw your bid, ask the sheriff who's bidding and uh, take it further if he wishes but um, that, that's, that's pretty much what I would do if he's concerned about it in terms of the Consumer Protection Act, I mean, what is that normally a seven-day cooling-off period? You made a purchase in haste and you regret. No. Does it, does it apply? Uh? No. Why not? No cooling-off, no no confirmation. Uh, the confirmation period is strictly up to the auctioneer. It could be 24 hours. It could be no reserve immediate. It could be seven days. It depends. But but why, why, is, that, why is that industry allowed this privilege? It's, uh, it's an industry, as I said, goes back thousands of years um, it, it's according to the alienation of lands act it's the only verbal contract where one piece of real estate can change hands to another uh, purely by verbal means you don't need a contract if somebody comes in comes into my auction bids stands up and says terribly sorry i i i i, I don't mm. want it anymore I, I said, you don't need to sign my contract it, the property is yours um, obviously we're very careful that you know the person isn't scratching his eye or, or twitching his ear uh, we make sure the, the the bids are real, the bids are there. If there's a mistake, we stop, we correct it. Um, but that's that, that's that's the way the, the new law was written. Um, there so, was, so there's a guy who comes is, in there who's, who's just having a bit of mischief making, right? You know, and and then bids whatever, and and of course that deal is now done. And then you know you guys done for the day because everybody's gone home, and he says, "Come on, of course I'm just joking." But what's what's the worst you can do to him? He's got no money. Well, that's, why, to mess around, that's, you know? that's why we charge high registration fees. I mean, just how, to, how to much? 50,000. Okay, to, so you do. To register, to get into our auctions, to get a paddle, you have to put down 50,000 rand. We must know that you're serious. Um, it doesn't happen that often, believe it or not. Not on our auctions. Um, the odd occasion, I think it happened once about two years ago. Um, chap turned around and said, Well, Toby, sorry, I, I actually I, 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 I don't have the money. 
um, you know, it's it's a case we go back to the seller. Seller has the option. Um, he's either sued uh, for the money. Uh, he loses his deposit. He loses the commission paid. You remember on an auction, on a real estate auction, the buyer pays the commission, not the seller. It doesn't happen that often. The last thing we want to do is is is, is sue someone for mm, mm, for mm, mm, mm. for compliance. Um, but you know, our, at the end of the day, our client's the seller, and we must protect them. So from time to time, it does happen. Not often. We, we put efforts in place like big registration fees. We we screen our buyers. We screen our sellers beforehand. We have a month to do that. And we know who has the money and who doesn't. Okay. Hold that thought. We'll continue chatting to an auctioneer who's serious about his business, Jeff van Rien. And he's the man in the spotlight. Let's get to, uh, well, to news headlines now, 2 th- uh, 3.30.